Hi there. After Scott's last surgery, he asked me to carefully go over with all of you in a blog about uh, what had happened and about the um, results of his biopsy and the pathology of his tumor. And I did that. And so he has asked me now to blog again about kind of all of the technical details of this surgery. Mostly because I was high uh, while I was in the hospital, so I don't really understand half of it. And I think he's, he's given you the uh, finer points of this, or the, the big picture. But, um, so I have here, I made so that I could explain this to you, a picture of Scott and, and his brain. Um, down here, this part, right, last time, you'll recall, he had a tumor in his cerebellum. And so this right here, this section, is his cerebellum. This was where the tumor was, I guess. Okay. <laughs> um, and so they had to go in and take out that tumor, right? Since then, I've learned more about the brain. And one of the things we've learned is that all surrounding the brain is a layer of membrane that they call dura. And so this, oh my, it forms like a pocket, right? There's this membrane that comes all along here. And this holds, what this does is it holds fluid in place. Um, your brain is, is connected to your spine and then all of this is we have we have dogs invading our movie. I'll, I'll pause. So uh, there's a layer of membrane that goes around the brain, uh, connecting to the spinal cord. Uh, that and they call that membrane the dura. Let's see. And so the dura is in red, and that holds in spinal fluid uh, because all of this is filled with um, a fluid. So, when they did Scott's first surgery, they had to cut through a layer of skin, they pulled apart muscle, they drilled through bone, and then once inside the, the skull, in that bone, uh, then they cut through this thin layer of membrane called the dura, so that they could get in here and take out the tumor. So then when they closed uh, his head back up, they stitched up that dura and they put back, they see, uh, screwed back uh, that piece of skull and they stapled back together all of that muscle and skin and so that it was all put right. But then something happened in the recovery process. Where they had gone through and stitched that very thin membrane, that got a hole in it. And so this spinal fluid, it started leaking out. And it started to fill, make little pockets of fluid here, kind of all along down in here. And that fluid, I mean, it could have leaked all over, and it did. And that created pressure and pain. And as the fluid leaked out, the body produced more to take its place. Um, and that put more and more pressure uh, on that hole that was created. And that allowed more and more fluid to leak out. Uh, and so what they call this, which they said is a fairly common complication, it's a pseudo, as in false, meningocele. I had to put it on multiple posts because it's a long word. But it's called a pseudo meningocele. And so he, Scott had pockets of spinal fluid basically outside of the cavity that they were meant to be in. So when they uh, went to repair this... And, and that meant that there wasn't enough spinal fluid in the brain, and that's why I was having the migraines, and this fluid was leaking out into 
into areas that was causing me physical pain. Mm -hmm. You could see and feel, look like goose eggs on the back of his head, right? Like someone had hit him and formed a bump. Um, so you could see these protruding even out of his head. So what they did is they went back, they cut back through the skin, they pulled back those muscles just like before, they took out the screws and that piece of, uh, of bone, um, and they went back to this membrane, the dura, and they reclosed it. And I'm told that when they got there, they said it wasn't just a small hole, as it often is, Scott's door uh, along that incision was just completely shredded. They said that he has kind of a, an abnormally thin dura, it sounded like. And so you know, that's why. The way I see it, if you're going to do something, you do it all the way. All the way. I don't just have a small hole, I shred mine. Mm -hmm. And so that's why it was important they did this. And that's why they also put in, I think you heard described. Um, that they put in uh, lumbar drains because this fluid, right, it's spinal fluid, this is the spine, and it fills all the way down the spine. And so by putting in a uh, drain all the way down at the base of his spine, they were able to lower the levels of spinal fluid in the brain and lower the pressure against um, the, the repair they made on that dura. Uh, and so they kept that on there until they thought that that door would have healed very well. Um, and then they took it out and shortly thereafter released Scott from the hospital.